Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this press conference concluding uh, the visit of the European Parliament uh, Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs Committee to Malta. Um, I would like to start by briefly introducing um, the members of the delegation, uh, Mrs. Roberta Metzola, who is representing the, uh, the EPP group, the Christian Democrat group, uh, to her right, Mrs. Asita Kanko, who is uh, representing the ECR group, the Conservative Reformist group. To my left, Mrs. Birgit Sippel, re representing the uh, Social Democrat S&D group. Um, to her left, Mr. Uh, Kuloglu, who is representing the, um, the, the, the European left group, the GUE group. Um, and to his left uh, is Mr. Berg, who is representing the uh, Identity and Democracy group, if I say that correctly. Uh, uh, Sven Giegold, uh, who was representing the Green group, uh, has already had to leave, uh, but he was also a member of the delegation. Uh, I'll start by saying the, what the background is to this visit. Uh, there has been uh, there have been earlier delegation visits to Malta, um, but we came urgently. Uh, we have anticipated a visit to Malta, which we had already planned in view of the uh, of recent events of the last uh, two weeks or so. Um, what is the involvement of the European Parliament and the European Union? Well, Malta is a part of the European Union. Multi-citizens are our fellow Europeans. But of course, this is also about preserving the integrity of the European Union, uh, the, the, the Schengen area, the internal market, uh, etc., uh, and also the whole area of uh, uh, security, justice, and freedom. Uh, so that is a bit the, um, the, the, the context of uh, our visit here. <laughs> um, we are very concerned with what we have seen over and heard over uh, the last two days. Uh, I think that uh, everybody agrees that there is uh, serious pressure on uh, the rule of law. Um, I'll go over a couple of separate issues. One, of course, uh, one that has been uh, much debated by many people uh, in recent days. Um, and that is the, the position of the Prime Minister. Um, we have also taken note of the fact that this morning, I understand, Parliament has been suspended for a fairly long uh, Christmas recess. Um, and uh, we feel that this is a very worrying situation. Now, I would like to underline that it is for the Parliament to decide the, the Maltese parliament, whether or not there is still a majority supporting um, uh, Mr. Muscat. However, we would like to share with you our views uh, and also the possible consequences. Um, we have serious concerns about uh, Mr. Muscat staying in office. Um, we have, let's say, concerns about the integrity of the Murder investigation, um, of course, everybody is uh, innocent until proven guilty, but there are just, in, in the period, the next 40 days are going to be crucial for the murder investigation. And we don't want any risk, or even a perceived risk, which is just as serious, um, that the investigation may be compromised in any way. There has to be absolute confidence in the process, and I think, uh, when he is in office, that confidence is not there. Uh, and I think confidence, not just of the Maltese citizens, but also of the European Union, because I underline again that Malta is part of the European Union and as such also uh, of the, uh, the, the area of freedom, security and justice. On the murder investigation, uh, we have seen in, uh, in recent days, in particular in the past week, uh, that progress is being made, important progress has been made, uh, which we welcome. Um, that is a step in the direction of truth and justice. However, we still have concerns over, um, let's say, threats to the integrity of the process. We have grave concerns over the fact that other investigations that should urgently be uh, conducted into corruption, money laundering, and investigations which are clearly connected 
to the murder uh, case, uh, those investigations have not either not started or they are not being uh, uh, they're, they're not being conducted uh, very vigorously. There we have very serious concerns. Um, then uh, some other things that have struck us uh, over the last couple of days, so not just, let's say, the, the politics and the institutional issues, but uh, we get very worrying signals about the safety of journalists, also other people's, but also the, that the livelihood of, and, and therefore the independence of journalists is under threat. Uh, there are threats to the right of peaceful demonstration. Uh, I'm, and I can say this personally to you because I've made the same remark 50 months ago when we were here. I'm very annoyed to see that the, the, the hate campaign uh, against uh, certain people, in particular the family of Daphne Caruana Galizia, has not stopped, and it has to stop. Um, there is also the issue of reforms, constitutional reforms. Uh, we note that the process has been set uh, in motion, the, the, com the reforms that have been suggested by the Venice Commission that was invited last year at our, um, at our suggestion. Um, and it is vital that these reforms are implemented quickly and fully. Uh, and you have probably also seen that the new European Commission attaches particular importance to that issue. Um, then uh, we have also noticed that um, this is not just about political institutions, it's also about a political culture and uh, we get the feeling that the bipartisan system leads to a bipartisan culture which has become you know, almost toxic and that is something that needs to be addressed. Then finally, um, the role of the, the, the European Union in, in all this. We have been monitoring the situation in Malta uh, for two years now. Uh, and as I said, uh, the, many of our concerns have not been uh, allayed. Uh, so we will continue the monitoring exercise. Uh, you will probably know in two weeks' time there's going to be a public debate in the European Parliament that will most likely be uh, wound up by a resolution. But we will also immediately upon return write to the new von der Leyen Commission and remind her um, of our urgent request in our March resolution to immediately start a dialogue within the rule of law framework with Malta. And this is particularly urgent, and we call on the Commission to start that exercise immediately because the next 40 days, as I said, are essential to the murder investigation and the other investigations, to the integrity of the process. Uh, this Parliament was able to uh, organize a mission within uh, two days, I believe. Um, so I think the, the Commission, which has considerably more means, can do so immediately, and they could be here, uh, I mean, this week even. Um, we would also argue, uh, we would also write to, um, to the Council, that is the, the heads of government, who are scheduled to come together, I believe, uh, 10 days uh, from now, and they've been conspicuously silent so far, but 10 days from now, the Prime Minister of this country will be sitting at that table with the other 27 leaders. So I think, uh, you know, they have to take position before that council meeting. Um, and finally, um, I think one, one other small point I would like to stress is the, the importance of the, uh, the presence of Europol and uh, they should get access, full access to uh, the, all the relevant investigations uh, and, and, and really, you know, witness from, from minute to minute what is going on. I think that everybody recognizes they've played a very positive and important role uh, and in the next 40 days in particular, that is uh, of the essence. Um, that's all I have to say so far, so thank you very much. <coughs> Who is going to... You're moderating? You're moderating? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, in Voyage Net News, uh, we now know that uh, the Prime Minister Joseph Muscat has been exchanging messages with the prime suspect in the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia, that is the prime suspect, Mr. Jorgen Fennec. Um, he was uh, mentioned in the investigations, and after he was being mentioned in the investigations, Mr. Fennec. Um, 
the Prime Minister was still exchanging messages um, uh, with this suspect. We have also the Prime Minister who has who had his ex-chief of staff, Mr. Keech Cambry, who is connected to Mr. Jorgen Fennec. But um, uh, we have the Prime Minister and Mr. Keech Cambry who are not being investigated by, uh, by the police. Um, do you still stand by the statement that was given yesterday to the media that the police are doing um, uh, a serious and uh, professional job in solving this case? Well, to start, to start with the last one, no, I'll start with the first point. Uh, the, the, the kind of news that you're referring to, and you know, reports like this have been coming out every day. Every day we hear a little bit more, there are more revelations, and it has only added to our concerns about the continued presence uh, of Mr. Muscat in the office of the Prime Minister uh, in connection with the investigation. It's actually quite remarkable that he's had you know, very substantial access to information on the investigation, and not just him, also Mr. Schembri. Um, with regard to the second uh, point, I would like to reiterate what I just said. Um, yes, we are positive about uh, elements of the investigation, but we also still have concerns. You know, it's neither completely black nor completely white. Uh, I also think we need to recognize that uh, any police force anywhere will always struggle a little bit with uh, the balance between the need for transparency and the need for discretion. Um, but uh, we will, let's say, we recognize that there is, there is certainly uh, a willingness to investigate and should that willingness uh, fade or are there people who are not, let's say, being constructive and helpful and are being diplomatic, uh, that is the very reason why we are really, uh, you know, staying on top of this as much as we can. We will be following, well, you know, almost on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Incidentally, I would also like to, uh, you know, if any of the colleagues wants to want to come in, um, please don't hesitate. Next question. I have a question for Ms. Sippel um, in terms of the SND, the Social Democrats. How how do you? What kind of pressure is being um, mounted on the, the Labour Party uh, that's a member of, of your, your group uh, to take serious action um, to, to remove the, the Prime Minister from, from office? Okay. Just lean, lean um, over a bit. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, I think it's without any doubt that there is pressure both on the Labour Party here in Malta and also, of course, on the socialists back in Brussels. And I think what we more and more see in these days during this visit, that unfortunately it's not that important what we believe what Mr. Muscat is doing or not doing, but the trust is totally destroyed. And if the trust is destroyed, you may like it or not, you might say it's unfair or not, but in such a situation, I think you have to take action. You can't simply, sorry, you can't simply continue as if nothing is happening. That's my statement for the time being. It's my personal statement because I haven't yet checked with my group, but I think we all agree that in such a critical situation where emotions are rising and situation is becoming toxic, a change is needed. And I would only like to add another point that we also exchanged today with uh, different groups that we met, that uh, yes, the Prime Minister has to leave office, but the situation in Malta, unfortunately, will not turn to the best immediate that day. And it will not only be enough to change the government, all those steps might be necessary, but I think we also, together, need to find ways to bring the society in Malta together, back again, so to create a new situation for cooperation. But, coming back to your first statement, the situation is very difficult, an activity needs to be taken, and it should be taken fast by the Prime Minister. Hello. I have two questions. Um, what's the way forward when it comes to this report and European institutions? And the second question um, would be what kind of repercussion, um, the repercussions there could be um, in Malta um, when it comes to this report and its relationship with the European Union, for example? Um, could this affect the new EU budget um, with regards to Malta and EU? 
which is currently being negotiated right now? Well, um, you know, <laughs> what will be repercussions? Uh, look, Malta is very firmly embedded in the European Union, okay? And I always say, we're, we're all Europeans, we're in this together. At the same time, everybody also has to abide by the same rules and the same standards. Because if, if part of the European Union is, is somehow compromised, then the whole European Union is, is compromised. Uh, even in very practical ways in terms of police and justice cooperation. Uh, um, so, uh, but I think it is not, basically it's not in, in, in our hands, it's in the hands of the government to decide you know, how the relationship with the European Union is. If they want to be a, uh, you know, an influential and, and respected member of the European Union, then they have to uh, abide by the same rules and standards, as I said. But it's in the hands of the government, uh, and they will have to show uh, that they are a credible partner. And I think, look, I have, I have let's, let's be clear here, I make the distinction very specifically between the government or even parts of governments and the country and the people because they are different things, okay? Sophia, can I add something? Yes. <laughs> what we think is that uh, Malta deserves better. Uh, this is an administration that is connected to, uh, with corruption and, uh, and the crime. Uh, this administration must leave. Uh, but what we do believe that the real image of Malta is not the image of this uh, administration. The real image of Marta is the image of Daphne Caruana Galicia, her courage, her bravery to, to challenge um, the, uh, the, the corruption and to tell the truth. And we must stick to that image. Next question. Over there. Um, no, you said that you had, co had concerns about the prime minister staying in office. However, yesterday um, you said that the Malta police force were doing a professional job. Also, Europe will have been a part of the investigations. Do you have um, faith in Europol to deliver in these investigations? Well, do I have faith in Europol? Yes, I have faith in Europol, but they're not doing it alone. They're not in charge of the investigation. That's not the way it works. Europol is invited by uh, national police forces to, to provide, let's say, assistance, all kinds of assistance, but they do not have operational powers, so they do not themselves uh, conduct the investigation, but I find it reassuring that they are closely involved, um, very closely involved, and they've stepped up their involvement again in, in recent weeks, um, so I'm, I'm, I have confidence in them, yes. Hello. Um, how do you, you spoke of the European Commission and the Council, how do you interpret their silence on the issue? Because the Commission has been saying on and on, we're following the case very closely, but I don't see any strong position, yeah. especially well, now with this new Commission. That's the magical phrase the Commission always uses for everything, we're monitoring closely. But uh, no, uh, look, they've, they've, we, the, the new Commission has been in office, uh, what, four days now? Um, the, the previous commission clearly completely ignored Malta, completely. Uh, the new commission clearly seems to take uh, a keener interest. We have seen that uh, Commissioner Jaurova has, uh, has, has made reference to the situation in Malta. Uh, I believe she, she had or will have a meeting uh, with the, the Justice Minister. Um, and we will press the commission as much as we can to be bolder, quicker, um, you know, and, and stand by their words because they're always talking a lot about the rule of law, um, but when it comes down to it, they're, they're often too timid. So I hope that this new commission that has just made a new start uh, is going to be much more uh, active and assertive in this, and I, we will, in our communication to the commission, we will stress very much the need to act immediately, not, you know, take in, after a procedure of many weeks and months, no, immediately. There is this 40-day period, uh, and that is crucial. Because if the Commission is going to be too, um, too reticent, too timid, and if in that 40-day period, um, 
you know, the investigation will be tampered with, if evidence disappears, if uh, guilty people escape, will we ever be able to forgive ourselves? Are we going to refer back to, I don't know, treaty articles or, uh, you know, uh, I think it is essential for everybody that justice is done and the commission will have to choose. You know, is it going to be bureaucratic and technocratic or is it actually going to stand by the side of the people uh, and show that the European Union is truly a community of values and a community, community of law? Thank you. I think the fact that we are here with this delegation is also a very clear and powerful uh, sign from the European Union uh, to sh say that uh, these fundamental values regarding press freedom are still important for Europe. Of course, you cannot, one cannot kill a journalist. Killing a journalist is like stabbing democracy. It's actually bigger than just going to committing random crimes. It's admitting that there is something fundamentally wrong. The, the, the goal of our presence here is to check and see what is going on in Malta, control whether the rule of law is prevailing, and then go back and report on that with facts and advocate for next steps. And this is what we are going, we are going to do. You know, we need to go through this process. I think um, what we have been watching, seeing, and hearing here, I must say that I am very much in shock and flabbergasted. Honestly, I never knew that when I was growing up in a little village in Africa, I would one day sit in European Parliament and experience what I'm experiencing now in one member of the European Union. So there is something we need to defend because when the press is not free, you cannot have politicians who are accountable and you cannot have a democracy that is functioning. So we're going to report honestly on that. We met a lot of people, we, we listened to everyone. We also met the family and I think I speak also for my colleagues here, I will never forget the heartbreaking pain that you could see in the two sons of, the, of, of Daphne and, uh, and her husband. Soon will be Christmas. This mother and wife will not go home to have her loved ones. And also, it's actually stabbing the press here in Malta. And what you have been going through, we saw that there is a lot of intimidation of journalists. This cannot be continuing and it's not going to be supporting. So we're going to do, do our work and uh, we will do what we can to move on, but we also have democracies, democr democratic processes to follow, but this is being taken very seriously. So this is part of what you, you, what you asked me as a question. I'll just add a little bit. It's difficult to be in this situation from Malta and listening to what has been said. Um, I have been clear, we have been clear that Joseph Muscat uh, must leave uh, immediately if this investigation is to have any credibility. And to move on, on to what comes next, we need to work on a rule of law mechanism that would look at this country objectively, that would see the role that a European Union member state has to have in such a union and to bridge the gap between the values that we fought so hard for, that we are so proud to have, and the tools that are available to protect them. Thanks. One last, last remark. You know, corruption has no party affiliation and integrity has no party affiliation. So I think we would really like to appeal to all politicians here, regardless of their uh, party affiliation, to consider very carefully what their responsibility is for this country, for justice, uh, and also for our common European Union. Meeting, but there is, re from your meetings, from the people you've been meeting from the meetings of the Prime Minister and the authority, do you think there exists a real threat to evidence actually going missing in this court case? If I believe there's an interest in evidence going missing? No, I mean, I mean the threat. Risk. Risk. Ah, uh, risk. Look, um, you know, if, if you're talking about a risk or a fear, then by definition you cannot prove it. But the fact that we are, are raising that means that, yes, we fear there is, a, there is a risk. And even if it's only a perceived risk, then, you know, that completely undermines trust. And trust is really, okay, you cannot express trust in, in uh, you know, in figures. You cannot measure it. It's not tangible. But it is the, the core ingredient of the democratic rule of law. And it sounds corny maybe, but it's true. And if people, if people have no trust 
in the institutions anymore, if people have no trust in the processes anymore or in the police investigation, if people don't know whom to believe anymore, you know, then, then this trust grows amongst the population, between people, it's devastating. So I think even, even if the risk were just perceived, and I believe it is a real risk, but even if it were just perceived, I think that would be sufficient reason for a responsible politician to say, okay, if I stand between, uh, uh, you know, trust, um, uh, or if, my, if I'm, I'm an obstacle to, to trust, then I draw my conclusions and I leave. Uh, can, I, can I add something? Uh, during the last two years after the assassination of Daphne Caruana Galicia, there, there, there's been a constant denial from the part of the government to proceed with the uh, with uh, with uh, uh, finding out uh, what happened with the crime. There was denial. There was denial of the public inquiry. There, there was hate speech uh, against the, uh, the 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 family of uh, of Daphne. Uh, there was a uh, there was a propaganda. Uh, so th all those elements, after the dis discovery, there were relations between the. Uh, Prime Minister, Chief of Staff, and the perpetrators made us uh, makes very important for this administration to, to leave the police and the justice free to do their jobs. And we have a, for this for this reason we, we have a base to say that we we were, we, we cannot trust uh, this uh, administration and and this office of the Prime Minister. To, to continue staying in power because we are afraid that some elements uh, will be destroyed, some evidence will be destroyed. Mr. Berg. Thank you very much. I would like to refer to the question from the gentleman to the left in regards to the repercussions. Um, as the investigation into the murder of uh, Mrs. Uh, Karuna Galicia is moving ever closer into the heart of the government, um, the lack of the support of the people of, of Malta for, the government, for their government and the alarming threats we are hearing uh, in regards to uh, infringement of freedom of press, threats towards journalists. Um, I do fear that um, uh, the current revelations will have a very bad uh, uh, influence on the reputation of Malta, oh, um, especially um, <laughs> in regards to business and commerce. Too late. Okay. Any other quick question? Oh, oh, I see three, four. Okay. We're not out of here yet. I see the gentleman in the back first. Moment. Wait for the micro. Uh, members of Daphne's family often describe Malta as a uh, mafia state, and they're not alone in that assessment. Do you agree with that view or disagree, and why? Look, you'd, you'd really like me to say that now, eh? Yeah, I mean, no. look, it, no. the point is, the point is, I think the, the purpose of our visit here is to make sure that things get back on the right track. Uh, and I don't think we would help the process along, uh, you know, by, by making, giving qualifications of that kind uh, on, on, to the media. But uh, it is very clear, very clear that there are very severe concerns over the rule of law. And I think, you know, the reaction of my, my colleagues here speaks for itself. I've been here uh, before, uh, uh, Roberta Metzola as well, of course, on the delegation, Sven Giegold, who's not, not here now. But we have a couple of new members on the delegation who I, I think were really shocked by what they saw. So, you know, our concerns, yes, are, are very grave. At the same time, uh, I think there are also lots of people of goodwill in this country um, that we want to support in getting things back on the right track. But there's a lot to do. Can, can I add uh, something? What, uh, the, the, the thing that there are mafiosi, that don't mean that uh, this is a mafia state. No. Hmm. We have mafiosi almost everywhere. Yeah, so we are not true. No. 